All right, it's time for the culminating moment of the season for the Penn State Nittany Lions. It's been a fantastic wire-to-wire -wire season for Penn State. And it was a team where we knew they were going to be great coming into this year. But in some of the areas they've been great, it's been a little bit of a surprise, starting with 125 pounds, a weight occupied by a true freshman, Braden Davis. And so in this video, I'm going to get into the draws, the pass, how navigable they are. Obviously, for some of the guys, it's, it's a – it's more of a top side path question, but a lot of these matchups, it's really interesting to look at some of the backside paths that some of the Penn State wrestlers could potentially have to go through. So we'll start at 125. It's the first weight. It's a weight with a lot of questions because you've got the top seed, Braden Davis, and he's a deserving top seed for Penn State. But what another thing we know is 125 is the weight of chaos. We've said it for a year or for the entire season, and it's lived up to the billing. And it's a tough draw for, for Braden, to be honest, because you look at his second match, it's going to be Dean Peterson, a guy he went to overtime with. Now, it's not necessarily going to be Dean Peterson. I mean, it's not a guarantee. Brett Unger has something to say about it. But Dean looked good at Big Tens, and he wrestled Braden, Tom, Tom, uh, excuse me, Braden Davis extremely tough in the duel. And there's no reason to think that can't happen again. Now, I think Braden is going to run the table here, and – and win uh, the entire tournament. But he could absolutely lose in round two. That's the thing. You're making these picks, and it's like it's just percentage points. Very, sh very, very small. So like, if he loses that match, let's say he loses to Dean Peterson in round two, which is only a slight upset in, in reality. I know in seeds it's like this earth-shattering moment, but in the actual reality, in the wrestling reality, it's, it's not that crazy. And if that happens, he will have, in his very first wrestleback match, either Caleb Smith or Michael Diagostino. Okay? Um, he lost to Caleb Smith this year. If he wins that one, he'd have, this is crazy, like Richard Figueroa. And then that's just to get to the round of 12, where he'd have someone like Troy Spratley or Drake Ayala, who he all, has also lost to. So it's a, it's a really tough <laughs> path back if he loses in round two. And so... For Rutgers fans, that's the, that's the potential path back for Dean Peterson. Not easy. Not easy at all. But navigable. So the, the name of the game, always stay topside as long as you possibly can. Should he lose in the semi, he'd have someone like Jory Volk, Troy Spratley, Drake Ayala, someone in that sort of um, category. Should he win that, he would have, I think, Luke Stanich. And then should he lose, it's someone like Jory or Drake. Something like that. So it's it's it kind of, with 125, all those names I'm saying, they're, they're sort of interchangeable. Not to make it sound like they're all, you know, the same person. But in terms of perception and who can beat who, there are some matchup variances that matter. But by and large, all these matches are, are close to toss-up. So, But for Braden, if you just stay on the top, which I think he's going to do, you don't have to worry about all this nonsense. So not... The best draw for a top seed, but it's exactly what you would expect if you were the one seed at 125. You knew your second round match is going to be tough. There was no, there was no getting around it. So not too bad for Braden Davis, but if he loses early, it's going to be a tough one. 33, Aaron Nagal wound up with the 10 seed. Now, this is a weight where coming into the season you said, this will probably be a top four or five guy most of the year. And I don't want to say Nagal regressed because he had – this kind of a regular season last year, right? It was up and down. He got pinned by Braden Palmer at the Southern Scuffle. He took some losses along the way, and he got really good at Big Tens and NCAAs. Now let's see what he can do this year at NCAAs out of the 10 seed, and I think his path is not terrible. Round two, I think he's going to have Nasir Bailey. As far as a 10-7 matchup, this is not bad for him. I think there's tougher matchups for for him out there, but I think he can take this one. I think Aaron Nagal can win that one, and it sets up a quarterfinal meeting against Ryan Crookham. So I feel like Nagao is sort of capped a little bit here. I don't see him getting past this quarter. I feel like Crookham in the previous meeting, it didn't look like Nagao was too close to making it up. So if you're looking for someone to reverse a result, you typically want to see some sort of signal that they're right there. I just didn't feel that way in the, in the Crookham match. And uh, Crookham's gone on to be so good. It feels like Nagao is going to lose in either round two or that quarterfinal match. So if he loses in round two to Nasir Bailey, which is, you know, we should look at that because Nasir's been great this year. 
it's someone like Dom Serrano would be the first wrestleback match. That's tough. And then Brody Teske or Braxton Brown. And then he's in the round of 12. And it's either Dylan Shaver or Dylan Ragason. Both guys that, that beat Nagal this year. So if you're Aaron Nagal, you really want to beat Nasir Bailey because you do not want, you're guaranteed to get that 4-5 loser uh, between Ragason and Shaver should they both make it. And I think they probably will. So for Aaron Nagal to place, you really want to hit that quarterfinal match because listen to this path. It's, if he wins in that quarter, beats Nasir Bailey, it's Sam Latona or Kurt Phipps maybe in that round of 12. And if he beats Sam Latona, he's an All-American. Then it's someone like Kai Rini or Nick Buzakis. And then he gets into the Shavers and the Vitos and the Ragusons and it gets a little bit tougher. But it's pretty clear in this instance. Sometimes it, it, you can create a path that's a little more navigable uh, if you lose earlier. You never want to lose earlier, but sometimes it's a, it's a lucky break. Not so in this case. Nagao needs to stay towards that top side, at least to get to that quarter. If he wins the... If he beats Crookham, then all bets are off, and he can, you know, maybe he's going to contend for a title. I just don't think that's going to be the reality. 141, Jesse Mend, or not Jesse Mendez, he's the one seed here for Ohio State, but Bo Bartlett is the two here. He lost in the Big Ten Finals. How's this path look? It's tough. Cole Matthews, round two. This guy did everything but beat him last year at NCAAs. I'm not as, um, you know paranoid about this matchup for Bo. Bo's gotten better this year. Cole hasn't gotten better. He's still just really, really good. But I think Bo has taken a step up. And I love Cole Matthews. Great dude. And I, I hope to see him finish his career on the podium. But I just think Bo Bartlett is, is built to win those kind of matches. Um, so then I think it's basically kind of same, same. Cole Matthews round two. And then it's Kale Happel tagging Jamison in his quarterfinal match. That's basically as tough as his round two match, in my opinion, Cole Matthews. I think he gets past it. I think they're both tough decision matches. It's Bo Bartlett. He's rarely going to destroy anyone, right? But I think he gets past that and goes against Real Woods, which is another losable match. Now, I, it, I have Bo winning this entire tournament, right? So I think he stays topside the whole way. I think he beats Bo Bartlett. I think he beats Jesse Mendes. But from round two on, it's decision victories for Bo Bartlett. And if it's within the margins like that, as good as college wrestling is, and as much point scoring potential as Cole Matthews, Tagging James, and Kill Hap will have, and Real Woods, you, you can't discount it. So let's, you know, indulge me here on the backside. If he loses to Cole Matthews, worst case scenario, I think, he would go through Cal Miller, Tagging Jameson, Ryan Jack in the round of 12. That's, that's not easy. 41's a really deep weight class. You want to stay topside here. If he wins that, he'd have someone like Sergio Limley. If he makes a semi and loses, which is possible, Real Woods can beat him, has beaten him. It's someone like Sergio Limley or Ryan Jack in his first wrestleback match, and then um, Brock Hardy maybe for, for third place, or, or Echemendia. If he loses in the quarter, it's, uh, it's pretty navigable, so that would be a loss to like Kale Happel or Tagen. It's going to be like Josh Edmond or Jordan Titus in that round of 12, and then maybe Brock Hardy after that. So it's all navigable for, for Bo Bartlett. Brock Hardy has proven to be a tough matchup, but I don't see the, their pass crossing this, uh, this tournament. Uh, if it does, it's probably in the, on the backside. So not a bad draw for Bo. There's nothing easy at 141. This is one of the tougher weight classes in America. 149, the superstar true freshman, Tyler Kasak, who was a 141 pounder in red shirt to start this year. Shane, Va Shane Van Ness goes out for the year with injury. Insert Tyler Kasak. He's been a beast. He got the seventh seed at, uh, for NCAAs. He got third at Big Tens. He avenged some losses. He's looking really good. Now, round one, tough. Jaden Abbas. That's a hard matchup. That's a hard matchup. But he should be favored there. Jaden's not had a great year. He's an All-American in the past, but he's not having a great year. Chance Lamer, second round, tough. This guy's beaten Austin Gomez. He's beaten some really good wrestlers in his career. He's the 10 seed for a reason. That's another tough one. And then in the uh, quarterfinal, Kyle Parco. I think all three of these matches are, are winnable for him. Um, I think, honestly, the, the whole bottom half, he can win these matches. I think, they're, I think it would take a really above and beyond performance from him. I don't think he's, we're going to quite see that. So here's the scenarios for Kasak if he loses at different points along the way. And he's going to be in losable matches pretty early on. 
even though I think he's likely to win them. If he loses in round two, it's something like Caleb Tyus, not bad. Corbin Munson, not bad. Then Ty Waters, the five seed. So he gets that four or five loser in the round of 12. So this is, we saw Nagao in this spot. You want the, the four or five loser in the round of 12, that's the toughest round of 12 match typically. Um, so Ty Waters is really tough from the top position and um, that's not an assumed win for, for Tyler Kasek should he get there. So that's a tough path back if he loses in round two. Uh, if he loses in that quarter to Kyle Parko, which is probably, if you're looking at the, like the Vegas odds, what's most likely to happen to, to Tyler Kasek, it's probably that he would lose to Kyle Parko. So this, let's hammer in here. It looks like Ethan Miller or Rachi in the round of 12. Feel good about that. Feel good about either of those guys for Kasek. Next match would be someone like Jackson Arrington. Very, very winnable, tough match. Arrington's ACC champion, just beat Caleb Henson. But that's not uh, beyond the realm for Kasek. And then should he beat him, he would have Caleb Henson or Ridge Lovett if he were to lose that semi. Doesn't seem super likely to me. So if he loses to Arrington, he'd wrestle for fifth and sixth and um, have someone like maybe Ty Waters in that match. So that's the path for uh, Tyler Kasek. Not too bad. It's going to be tough. He's going to be in nip and tuck matches throughout. He's not someone that's going to run through the thing. But look at what they Penn State did this weight last year. You had Shane Van Ness who didn't have a top 15 win coming into NCAAs, and he got third. And he almost beat Yanni. People forget that. So could he do that? I don't know. But he's got a lot of ways to score. He's got a really hard pace. He's not going to um, – He's not going to go down without a hard fight, and he's not going to go down without firing off a lot of attack. That's why Kasek so fun to watch this year. 57, there's not a t – I mean, for, for some of these Penn State guys, I'm not going to spend as much time. Like, Kasek, you want to look at the, the backside and all that, but for, for Levi Haynes, I mean, I, it just doesn't seem like he's going to be really threatened here or challenged. And If he's losing in round two to Brock Mahler or in that quarter to Will Lewan, they've got – Different kind of uh, situation. But his top side path looks like Wilcox, who's tough, but he'll beat him. Brock Mahler, three-time All-American, tough, but not having a great year. Will Luan, maybe the scariest match up there because I think in the semis he's going to have either Ed Scott or Andonian or Ryder Downey. I think he matches up better with any of those three guys than he does against Will Luan. For whatever reason, Will Luan is a really tough nut for him to crack this year. They've been two... Really close matches. It was a 2-1 win in the duel and then an overtime win for Levi in a Big Ten final. So Willowan's wrestling well. That's a tough quarterfinal. If that's the match, it could be Peyton Robb, uh, at which point yeah, maybe that's a little, a slightly better matchup for, for Levi. But um, either way, it's a tough quarter. I think the quarter for Levi is tougher than the semi, which I think is going to be Ed Scott. And I just think he, may, he matches up well against Ed. Ed is... A really fun guy to watch because he takes a lot of risk, but he makes about one mistake a match where I think Levi's probably going to capitalize on it. And so Ed Scott, Levi Haynes, I got to go with Levi. And then, you know, who does he see? Is it Meyer? Is it Jacory? Is it Frannick? Is it Chittum or Brayton Lee? I'm not sure. Um, I know the match I, I really want to see just from a fan perspective is Meyer Shapiro. I want to see how that what that match looks like because I think he can score with him on his feet. But seven minutes will be the question. So solid draws for Levi Haynes, uh, no doubt about it. But that quarterfinal is going to be pretty tough for, for a one seed. 65, similar type of deal here in that for Mitchell, I just don't see the, the friction coming, right, um, until the finals. I think he really runs through this. So it's looking like it's Max Mayfield, Connor Brady, or Casella in round two, Cam Amin or Olenek in the quarter. Guys that just want to hang and, and slow things down, that's not going to work against Mitchell. They've tried, people have tried it. It doesn't work. Mitchell is just, he will not be lulled into your game. He only plays his game. And that's why I respect Mitchell so much. He's not like, all right, let me play off. I can play a positional thing. No, I'm only going to fire and attack and bring the heat for, for seven minutes. And we'll see, uh, you know, where the chips fall after that. So, I don't think he's that vulnerable in that quarter, whether it's Olenek or Amin. And then whether it's Ramirez or Caliendo, I, I, just, I just can't imagine. That. Ramirez has to pin him, 
right? I think that's the only opportunity. You gotta, you gotta put them down and keep them there. So that's a, that's an exciting matchup. I think there'll be a lot of excitement because Julian's gonna be firing early. But if he can't pin him, I think Julian, I think Mitchell's gonna make the finals, and he's gonna have his hands full against Keegan or Carr. Um, you can't count this guy out. You can't count this guy out of those matchups. But I think Mitchell's making the finals here. I think you feel good about the draw. You get the two. You avoid the national champion, David Carr, a guy who I think is actually a tough matchup for Mitchell. He's opposite your side. You wouldn't see him unless it's the NCAA finals or wrestle back. Um, and I'm not sure either of those two are reality for this situation. Uh, um, 74, Starachi watch. Man, you, you guys know the deal here. Uh, if he, I think he's going to make that quarterfinal. I think he beats Adam Kemp. Adam Kemp, this round two, Kemp is strong and fast and does not give up a lot of points. So it's going to take a lot of aggression and attacks from, from Carter to, to beat him. I think he will. And that sets up the Makai uh, matchup that is going to be have all eyes on it. Should he lose to Makai Lewis in that quarterfinal map, bout, it's someone like Peyton Mako in the round of 12. It's maybe Shane Griffith in that first All-American round, and then maybe Rocco Welsh. So it's really tough if you lose in that quarter, which, you know, for Virginia Tech fans, Makai Lewis, man, if you lose here, it doesn't get a lot easier, though I think the path to placing is, is pretty clear. Should he lose in round two? Just as, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen with Carter. We have no idea how healthy he is. He says he's fully healthy. Penn State has never... They've only forfeited out one time uh, in uh, their history that I can recall, and it was Nick around. He didn't even wrestled NCAs that year, so I think it. I think it's not great. Should he lose in round two to Adam Kemp? It's like Luca Augustine, Jackson Turley, Edmund Ruth. So again, navigable, but we don't really know. I don't really know the question I'm answering here because I don't know what we've necessarily got with Carter. I'm choosing to expect the. A great Carter Starachi. Maybe not 100%, but good enough to win a title. So I think he stays top side. And his toughest path or his toughest matches may be in that quarterfinal, Makai Lewis. I think everyone feels like he is the best non-Carter guy at this weight class. So that's what I think it'll be at 74 for Carter Starachi. 84, Bernie Truex. This is one where you want to look front and backside. I think he can make the semis. I think he can make the finals. I think he can... I think he can do it all, but it's also possible he takes some, an, a loss in that quarterfinal. If he does lose to Dustin Plott, I think he still places because I think it's going to be someone like Lane Malchuski or Will Feldkamp in the round of 12. And then Jaden Bullock, that next round, that's a close match because Bullock does not get scored on very easily, but I think he wins that. And then it's like Lenny Pinto again to get in that third or fourth place match. So if, should he lose to Dustin Plott? I think he's got a decent draw to get to that third, fourth place match. Not bad. Uh, if he were up to be upset by Colton Hawks, that would be a surprise to me in round two. If he loses that match, but just for the sake of preparation, uh, let's look at that. So it would be Soldano, who's crazy. Chris Foca, who knows, right? Chris Foca is someone we think is really good, uh, but we ha just haven't seen it this year, the, the Foca of old. If we get that Foca at NCAAs, who knows? He could be someone that Bernie's facing later in the tournament. And then Bennett Berge potentially in the round of 12. So not too bad for Truax should he lose there. And if, uh, if he makes a semi, it's someone like Trey Munoz. That's a tough matchup. Munoz has beaten him in the past. Um, and then Dustin Plott or Lenny Pinto for third. So all in all, not too bad. The question is, can he beat Dustin Plott and Isaiah Salazar in back-to-back -back matches? I think they're winnable. I'm predicting it. I think he's going to do it. I've been probably a little higher on Bernie all year long, and I haven't gotten off the bandwagon because every, every time I'm thinking, like, all right, maybe not, he does something that gives me uh, reason to expect that he can. He beat Lenny Pinto at Big Tens after losing to him. He just lost to Isaiah Salazar. So he's good at making adjustments. Can he make another adjustment against Salazar? Now, the question is plot. He hasn't seen plot. He hasn't wrestled plot. This is plot's first year at 184. So there's not going to be that familiarity there. He's not going to be able to make an adjustment. He's got to make adjustments in match, or he's going to have to come in with a really good game plan. So that'll be the question um, 
for, for Bernie Truax. And if he can make the final, all bets are off. Parker Kekheisen is going to be the favorite there, but he was right there. He gave Parker one of his toughest tests of the entire season. Now, for 197 and heavyweight, I, it, there's not a ton to say. I'll, I'll go through the paths here, but Aaron Brooks, he's as um, – if I, could, if I had to lock in one NCAA finalist with the fate of the universe, um, you know, counting on it, I would say Aaron Brooks to make the NCAA finals. I feel that confident in it. Now, he makes the finals. I think it's going to be Trent Hydley. Every time they wrestle, it's close. The first time they wrestled at NCAAs, it was extremely close. Um, the second time they wrestled, it was pretty dang close. Now, last year, 6-3 final, that's the most one-sided match they've had. But Trent's wrestling better this year than he was last year but so is Aaron. So I think it's Aaron. I think he wins this weight. His path is as follows. It's probably going to be something like Bates, and then Luke Stout or Novak, then Stephen Buchanan or Stephen Little, then Michael Beard or Rocky Elam, Cardenas. These guys are, are tough and hard to score on, but he can score on, on almost anyone in the world. So I think he's going to be able to do that and make the final. I think he's your national champion. Goes out a four-timer. Um, and if I didn't mention it, I think Starachi is going to do the exact th same thing. I think he is going to win a fourth title, although going to be a lot tougher for Carter than I think it will be for Aaron. Then again, Trent Hiley is, is on an absolute warpath right now at 197. And the move up to 197, I questioned it initially. Like, man, what are you doing? Aaron Brooks finally goes up to 180, 197. You stay at 184, you're, you could win a title. But... He's wrestling better, and you want to get better at the sport. And it seems like the move up and the focus on wrestling, not making weight, it's had a really positive impact for, for Trent. So um, ultimately the call I didn't think was the right call. It looks like it was the right call. And leave those decisions to the pros, I guess, is, is what you would say. Greg Kerfleet, I think great draw because you avoid Younger and Wyatt Hendrickson uh, opposite your side. Those two guys are – those are the clear two and three best, and they're the two and three seeds. So that's the benefit of being the one. And it's not always as clear for the one seed. Ask Makai Lewis. But in this instance, it works out pretty well for Greg Herfleet, who will go through Wilhelm, then I think Greece, Feldman. You know, Feldman's get, coming along, but he's not ready to beat Greg yet, I don't think. And then it's Colton Schultz probably in the semi. Could be Nathan Taylor. Um, but I think Colton... And I, I just have a hard time thinking he's going to be able to get to his underhooks and tie him up and beat him up that badly. So I think it's going to be Greg making the finals. I think he's going to win NCAAs. And so, yeah, I think it's going to be a really strong showing for Pitts 8. I think it, it goes without saying they're going to win NCAAs, but the question is, you know, by how much? I think it's going to be a lot. How many champs? They could, they could win eight. They could put eight in the finals. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy, and it's not. But let's, let's stick. Could Braden Davis win? Of course. Could Bo Bartlett win? Of course. Top two seed. Um, could Levi? He's the favorite. 65. Can Mitchell win? He's a two seed. Yes, he can. Can the three time national champion Carter Stracci win? Yes. Um, you know, can Bernie? Yeah. Can Aaron? He has. Can Greg? He's the number one ranked. So it's going to be a really incredible show. Now, they've got to do it, right? But one thing we've seen year in, year out at NCAAs, they raised their level. And they wrestled really well at Big Tens. And Kale even said that in the post-tournament. Hey, the guys wrestled really well. So there may be another level we see from Penn State. And for the rest of the country, that's a really scary thought.